The seasons are beginning to turn once again, and that means two things. I'm now preparing my body for the miserable, deadly chill of winter, and it's time for a quarterly wrap-up. And this time, it's all about hearts. Sometimes, a little more literally than others. From a goose that's captured the internet's collective heart, to passionate characters that spill their innermost thoughts and desires, to taxi drivers and fellow mech pilots, the games this time are full of heartstring tuggers and heart warmers alike. But just like always, no matter what, the games on this list can all be completed in five hours or less. Quirky games that encourage you to kick back for a few hours and make your own fun, or want to tell a sharp, emotionally resonant story in just a half hour. And without further ado, it's time to dive right in. Not long ago, in a town much like yours, there was a young woman who was very happy. Until one day her heart broke so violently that her sorrow echoed through space and time. I don't think there's a better way to describe this game than that montage, but here goes. Sayonara Wild Hearts is pure, unfiltered joy. It's video game chicken soup for the soul. It is wild, passionate, sometimes trippy, and always, always, always one-upping itself. It's not the most readable of games, but in the face of such undeniable raw emotion, who the hell cares? This game isn't about tight controls. It doesn't have them. It's not about intricate, nuanced gameplay. It doesn't have that either. It's about flying a million miles an hour down the highway while having a sword fight on the back of a motorcycle against opponents with swords the size of a city block that combine to make a goddamn jet, because why not? But I suppose I should explain what's actually going on here. Sayonara Wild Hearts bills itself as a pop album brought to life. You're immediately dragged out of reality and thrown into a dream world of tarot card arcana, motorbikes, ballet dancing sword fighters, and a million other radical things that I'm not going to spoil by listing off. And much like a pop album, the game's music, visuals, and gameplay are constantly switching it up every two minutes as it proceeds to do whatever the heck it wants with its pink and purple dreamscape. By and large, you'll be racing down Sayonara Wild Hearts playable music videos while trying to collect as many little hearts as possible for a high score, sometimes with a few extra mechanical twists thrown in. Much like the best albums, this is a game you can sit down with, experience all at once, and walk away literally feeling like a different person. And also, just like the best albums, you'll want to play it on repeat for days. I know my praise is glowing on the verge of purple prose and I already have a weak spot for games like these, but Sayonara Wild Hearts is filled with wow moments from start to finish, and you don't come across this wholesome a mix of energetic joy and whimsy often. Do not skip this one. A short hike. It is not easy to get my hair trigger attention span and constant sense of dread over wasting time to shut up and take it slow for five minutes. But damn did Short Hike manage to do it. And considering I'm pretty sure that's exactly what this game is going for, I don't think I could be giving it higher praise. A Short Hike has got a lot of Stardew Valley feel-good vibes, what with the whole story of running away from the city to chill at a public park for a bit with a cast of laid-back folks you can chat up and generally have heartwarming fun times with. Mechanically, it's primarily based around a climbing mechanic that's gonna feel really familiar. But that's not all there is to it, since you're also playing this bird that can glide from cliffside to cliffside, and there are a whole bunch of mini-games to go explore while you chat up everyone within a country mile. The game gives you a simple mission to hike up to the top of a mountain, but it's always constantly encouraging you to get distracted, go off the beaten trail, and get involved with all the people you bump into along the way. And that encouraged wanderlust is easily the game's strongest point. Even in an era with plenty of massive RPGs to choose from, it's been a long time since I've been so content to sit back, essentially side quest for an hour, and just... chill.
I don't know how a short hike pulled that magic trick off, but I enjoyed the opportunity nonetheless. Bird of Passage Service industry games seem to be kind of in with the indie scene right now. There's like half a dozen games coming out this year that put you in the role of a cab driver or barista as an excuse to throw you in front of colorful characters from vastly different walks of life. After all, no matter who they are, sooner or later they're going to need a lift. So literally any character the devs want could end up in the back seat. Bird of Passage, however, puts you on the other side of that equation. You're the one playing the colorful character, and you're blabbing your life story to a bunch of taxi drivers in a surreal, abstracted Tokyo that isn't quite right. There's a bit more to the idea than just that, but it's a bit difficult to dive into plot details because this is a 100% narratively focused game, and the primary joy comes from investigating its brief story. In fact, the only gameplay in this one comes from picking dialogue options as you investigate the main character through their own words. At first, it might not look like this game has a definitive ending, as you quickly start rotating between identical taxi drivers, but stick with it. Each taxi has multiple conversation trees to explore, so you're rarely repeating conversations, and the more details you fill in from each chat, the easier it'll be to find the right combination of dialogue choices to reach the credits. Bird of Passage really resonated with me, largely because of its presentation. It's got some clever touches in the music, some fittingly surreal art direction going on, and above all, the way it teases out details about the game's main character is impeccably paced and always kept me wanting to find out more. It's only 20 minutes and just 3 bucks, so if you've got an open Sunday, I highly recommend making that humble investment. Exception On the complete opposite side of the spectrum from a short hike and bird of passage is Exception, a neon-drenched platformer that looks hard as nails a la N Plus or Super Meat Boy, but isn't quite as punishing as it might appear at first blush. And before you start thinking that's an insult, that's exactly my jam when it comes to platformers. Exception looks slick as hell and makes you feel like a damn boss as you sprint through each of its 30-ish second levels, but it has a more generous margin of error and has a few quality of life tricks like being able to just hit a button to automatically wall jump back and forth, so you don't have to sit there punishing yourself for an hour to beat one level. It's also got some pretty unique level design. See, Exception takes place inside the digital representation of a computer, so on top of every level having some very motherboard-inspired looks, they are all constantly reconfiguring themselves. Anytime you hit one of these loopy symbols, gravity and or the entire level shifts. And the devs took this idea and ran with it, leading to some pretty awesome levels like these reforming grids and this one that has you repeatedly crossing through the middle of an asterisk. Sometimes hitting a switch will just flip a section of the level, other times you'll find stages formed of several rooms that reconfigure themselves into entirely new interlocking patterns to run through again, and other times you'll run one way, flip upside down, and then have to run back across the ceiling. There's also a narrative in there about a virus taking over a computer, but it's 100% skippable and not really what to come to the game for. Exception also does have a few duds, particularly with a few of its boss fights and some levels where you can actually outrun the shifting geometry, but those are few and far between. Overall, it's a well-presented platformer that feels great to sprint through and came up with a lot of really interesting ways to play with its gimmick. Can Androids Pray? You are going to die in 20 minutes. There's no way out of it, no 11th hour twist is going to save you, even MacGyver couldn't figure out how to help you now. You can't even move. This is the end. What do you do with it? Well, there's only one thing to do. There's another dying soldier right there next to you, and nothing else to do but talk to them. That soldier, Beatrice, understandably isn't taking this very well. She is a hot mess, and in her final moments, she does a lot of the usual things people do when they're dying. Get angry, blame you for getting her killed, randomly recall old memories, and get really introspective about God and what's going to happen in about 20 minutes, usually bouncing from one to the other and back again. Can Androids Pray is a game where you're dying, angry mech pilots in the middle of a dystopian sci-fi war, but really this game wants to ruminate on the nature of God, and Beatrice is its mouthpiece. Everything else is scaffolding for that exercise. And if I'm being honest, it 
didn't hit me quite as hard as some others that I've seen reviewing it. I feel like the game mostly just talked at me about its own theory on God and didn't leave much room for me to do any real introspection of my own views on the topic, and perhaps it could have benefited from taking a little more time in that regard. But all that said, it still has some interesting stuff to say, a delightfully bizarre concept, and a stellar conclusion. Untitled Goose Game Most games sell you the fantasy of being a legendary hero or space captain, but Untitled Goose Game gives you the ultimate fantasy. You get to be an asshole. If you haven't seen the legion of memes and gifs surrounding Untitled Goose Game, here's the skinny. You are a goose, and your mission is to muck up as much of a sleepy country town as you can. Harass people, steal their shit, and throw it in a lake. Untitled Goose Game is very much more about overall scampy charm than any rigorous gameplay loops. The stealth mechanics are pretty simple and straightforward, most of the puzzles are equally simple and at times incredibly repetitive, and the stakes couldn't be lower. But that's not what you come to this game for. You come to Goose Game to revel in the pettiest slapstick mayhem imaginable. And from causing a ruckus in a TV store to yoinking a stool out from under someone, there's plenty of that. If I'm being honest, the game's popularity paradoxically works against it a little bit. After being inundated in goose memes for a week and a half, I feel like playing the game itself wasn't much of a step up from watching it light up my Twitter feed. But also, reveling in goose mayhem has definitely been one of the highlights of Twitter this past month. So that's admittedly already a pretty high bar to pass over. You may want to just watch someone else play it and get the Twitch performance as a bonus, but whether you buy or watch, Untitled Goose Game's mundane misery is still a lark. And it has a pretty fantastic crowning moment that's worth playing through for. That's it for this quarter's wrap-up of games, but if you're looking for more recent short titles, I've got a whole long backlog of reviews you can check out. Seriously, I do this all year round, so you can find a ton of great short games that will absolutely blow your mind. And if you've got a game I missed from the last three months that you liked, give that game a plug in the comments. And if you like this video, hey, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching this far, and I'll see you all next week.